Okay, Han serving first, 0-0. Zero, zero. And Billy starting out strong, 4-0. Well, like you said, Billy's been training, you said, in China, and you never know. Yeah, he, this past summer, went to China. Although recently, in a couple of the tournaments, he didn't play in the Pac Rim Open, although it, he was at the tournament for fear that maybe his seating would change. Mm. Not something that I would advise and I made a comment to a number of our friends in common that going into the nationals you need more match play not less and then the following week he lost to a 2000 player in Seattle once again not being tournament tough but it seems like after losing to Krish from ICC in the juniors to knock him out in a very tough four game match that he's maybe gotten a little more of a relaxed state that by not coming through and making the junior team now, he can play a little freer. But um, definitely you don't want to be hiding out or not playing competition before the big ones. They're Doesn't just, sound like a smart move to me. Uh, it just makes you that, that much more tighter when the competition is upon you. So right now he is looking good in game one. But there's Han's backhand loop so strong. Both both off the bounce from the third ball attack position. Great misdirection right there by Han. Billy jumped back up close to the table. Han was gonna have nothing to do with that. Well, Han definitely has the experience edge in this match. I just wonder with Han, I know he's a full-time mm -hmm. computer science worker and not focused on training for table tennis as he was as a junior and before the 08 and 12 Olympic tryouts where going into Beijing, he played the final match with David Zhuang to make it and it went the full seven games. So that was really his primary focus as a up and coming young players to make the Olympic team. But he has won multiple national titles on the double side. Quite a bit of difference in the consistency off the backhand loops. Okay. That's like three points in a row. Han's on a little bit of a momentum roll here. And Han, in his previous match, did beat Peter Lee. So he was able to reverse last year's finals. And very tight, short side spin serve. Billy unable to keep it short or even get it over the net. But a nice half long serve by Billy, handcuffing Han in the exact same manner. That's one thing that Billy has improved on is keeping his serve short, not letting the opponent get a free loop. Han doing a great job of getting Billy's first loop back on the table into a good location.
takes the first game. There's a case of the banana loop not working. So in the other quarterfinal we have on table two, Jeff Wong against Yahao Zhang. Currently, Jeff is leading three games to two and they've just started the sixth game. Both players playing very strong, powerful shots. But we're now in game two, Billy Ding and Hong Xiao. Very strong opening by Han. Hits the net, misses the table. Han's backhand loop is so reliable, I'm surprised that he's having some difficulty right now. He's serving it. There's a nice backhand loop there. On serving with a lot of side spin, side top short, which is going to make it tough for Billy to keep the ball short and low. Anytime Billy pushes it, that's a ball that Han can easily open up off of. Billy's doing a little bit of the same thing. Whichever one of these players makes that first loop, it's going to have a slight advantage. Billy is playing out of the Seattle Pacific club in Bellevue, Washington. I'm sure a lot of his club mates are following the action online here at USATT.org. And we have a really nice crowd now building in the auditorium. Now that we're getting to the final rounds and both the men's and women's singles are being featured in the quarterfinals. And of course, we'll have a ton of matches all day tomorrow as well to crown the national champions. And takes a little lead, 5-4. Another net that then doesn't hit the table. Can both players really fighting for that opening? Seems like Hans a little more comfortable moving it around, making sure Billy doesn't get a clean block. And he went for a fast serve, deep serve. Very aggressive and good time to do it at 7-4. If you're able to take that point, really stretches the lead. But Billy quite ready for the change of pace. There you could see Han on the forehand side, very comfortable keeping it on the table, but on the backhand side, increasing the revs and going for a little bit more speed. Looks so relaxed in that last rally. Watch Han's backhand, it just reminds me so much of Chen Yingwa. 
his primary coach, both the ease and the racket head down a little bit and snapping over the ball. Mm. Han's got to be careful here. Yeah, pushed it a little high. <laughs> All it takes is a quarter inch too high. Now Han with the serve. Beautiful side spin, side top serve. Billy just trying to be too careful with the ball. That's a problem for Billy. Do not allow Han to have that opening loop and we're tied up at one game apiece in this best of seven men singles quarterfinal from Las Vegas. So as both players go to their corners, Billy is being coached by one of the many coaches in the Seattle area, Jai Chi, and Han is being coached by clubmate Stephen Chan. But the first two games couldn't be any closer with both being decided only by two points, but it does look like Han's got a little bit more control over the rhythm, controlling the backhand play as well as that first initial opening shot, especially on the forehand side. And again, Billy does have momentum coming in this match with the two upsets. And uh, again, if we look at the ratings, we're looking at a 200 point differential. Uh, mm -hmm. So you would think he needs to be more aggressive or do something special. And the one thing, Len, that I've noticed about watching Billy play, especially in the Pacific Northwest, is that he really has a mature game. He doesn't go for too much, but he tries to work his forehand loop in. And you could see that drop shot, the ball went high, bounced up, and it's over. There's, it's over, <laughs> exactly. If Billy is blocking Han's loop, he needs to stay close to the table so he can put some force behind it. Han's able to misdirect that opening loop. Often Billy will just be happy to put it on. There's a nice step around that catches the edge of Billy's racket. Nice backhand opening by Billy on the near court. side spin on his own serve. Both players making it extremely difficult to keep the returns short off the serve. And Beautiful that, counter loop there. And but, but he set it up with that return, putting side spin, making it go off on an angle. It was, he knew what he was doing. <laughs> really well placed. Yes. 4-4. And Billy got that point with just simple blocks, but to good locations. And staying close to the table so that really didn't give Han enough time to take a huge backswing, but forcing him to play sustained attacks. Beautiful combination there by Han, set up so nicely with his Strong backhand opening. Six, five, 
Billy looking really strong here in the middle of game three. His body language says he's confident. It really does. He's controlling the short game right now. Well, that ball didn't quite get over the net. Han has one more serve to try to tie this game up. Mm. Billy with the mini break here. Six Billy. Very aggressive serve from Billy Ding. Quick update on table two. Jeff Wong has defeated Yahao Zhang to reach the semifinals in a very exciting 16 to 14 six game match. So the winner of Han Xiao and Billy Ding will go up against Jeff Wong. Nice loop, good placement. And Billy is in the driver's seat right now, able to keep the two-point lead through the tail end of this match, or this game. 10-8. Beautiful backhand play by Han Shao. Two strong backhands. That's down double game point being able to pull those shots out. Excellent play by Billy. Can just take me his time and how much closer could this match be? <laughs> Not very much closer. It's, you have you to win, win by two. two. <laughs> yep. first out away from uh, his coach and ready to play. And here comes Billy. Well, Han needs this game. He still doesn't want to get down 3-1, that's for sure. Especially not with Billy's strong footwork and young legs. If I'm Billy, I'm coming out swinging. If I'm Han, I'm making sure that none of my serve returns go at all off the end of the table. That ball caught the edge. But really set up nicely by Han, taking the service advantage away from Billy with a nice drop shot. And this game is no different than the first couple so, games. <laughs> it's always been within two to three points. Three, Billy really needs to make those type of points you can't give away. Balls that are slightly high on the forehand. Four, 
really seems like both players are expecting to drop that serve short that even a half long serve could actually be more effective here as the players are stepping in to return the serve. Now I almost feel Billy pushing a little bit. Yeah, it looks it's yeah. like he's over mm -hmm. overdoing it just a tad. Just when I was going to say it was the first time there has been a three-point lead at all, uh, it's not. It's a Beautiful backhand reloop off the bounce. That's exactly what Billy wants to do on every single point. Nice short serve, usually with a lot of side spin, getting a ball that comes off the end of the table, allowing him to make that first heavy top spin and to move the ball around. Well, there's a three point lead by Billy, 9-6. Very nice step around by Han. Very Sur strong block by Han. How strong? Surprise! <laughs> Game's tied. 9-9. Nine, nine. And if you're going to open up to Han's backhand, you've got to be ready for a couple different options. And there again, that heavy side's been served. Billy trying to spin it up. Got to do a little more forward driving in order to bring it down. That ball missed by an inch. Exactly what Han was looking for. And we're at deuce. To keep the streak alive of four games all being decided by two points. Excellent play by Han Shao. Controlling the serve, getting the first backhand loop in, but placing it so perfectly right down the center line, catching Billy off balance. Mm, Billy with his own backhand loop. Wow. It's just a small pop up. It was short, but again, Billy with excellent footwork able to jump on top of that ball. Give himself another game point. And Han's got some power of his own. The short side spin serves are so difficult to keep low when you're dropping them. You've got to be able to take a little bit of the side spin off and not allow that ball to jump. And both players staying with the heavy side spin.
Again, Hans backhand opening. Just as devastating as his forehand if you give him a free swing. Oh, very aggressive <laughs> serve. I was just thinking to myself, Lynn, I wonder if there's a opportunity. And Billy is calling a timeout. Again, excellent strategic decision. This is a timeout from a position of strength with a chance to go up 3-1 and the add. But he's gonna have to do something different with the serve return. Just tries to keep it short. Last couple have all popped up and Hans had no difficulty with his third ball attack. So this time out, he's actually asking for some advice. What should he do? Han with the serve. Sometimes the timeouts can cause the server just to get a little bit out of sync. So Han's gonna make sure he keeps his own serve short. And Billy's able to wow. break open this match to go up Three to one. And he won by how many points, Sean? It will be once again by the narrowest <laughs> of margins. Now I'm sure Billy will be a little more freer in his serve and serve returns. Now that he's got a little bit of padding in this very tight quarterfinal match. Winner will get to play Jeff Huang in the Grace Lynn Table Tennis Center in Southern California. We still have a number of great matches on our schedule tonight. So get comfortable. Get up, bring a pillow. We have ours. And Not only do we have a number of exciting men's matches, but also Ariel Shing will be playing against Prachi Jha. So looks like they're gonna be on their court fairly soon, but we will continue with this exciting Billy Ding out of Seattle against Han Shao from the Maryland area. And Billy takes the first point. 1-0. Billy can also take a little bit more of a conservative position right now, knowing that Han has to attack. Didn't look too conservative on that one. No, but what's wild, then is that he can conservatively just keep spinning the ball, keep mm -hmm. looping up and not going for too much. Whereas we saw the end of the last game, both players were really trading shots. Mm -hmm. Han with a very well-placed ball. Han cannot afford any loose points right now. Han's last backhand, he, took, he didn't take spin off the ball on purpose, but the ball really didn't grip. Really surprised Billy with a no spin return. And there's a nice forehand Beautiful. driving ball. What Billy can't do is go passive. He can't think, well, I've got a three to one game lead now, I'll just wait for my opponent to lose. Han's not gonna lose this match. Billy's gonna have to win it. Han has way too much experience to not put out total effort to come back in this match. Yep, this is exactly where Billy has to think, how did I get my victories? What did I do to get those points and just reproduce it? And serving into the middle and getting Han out of his backhand corner has been a tactic that has worked well in the first couple games. Five, Billy really had an opportunity to jump up and kind of put pressure on Han after Han kind of got out of sync. 
But he, I think he did surprise Billy with that serve. See Han really changing the tempo and the pace from a really quick off the bounce forehand to a slower, spinnier backhand. And you mentioned his coach, Chang, a little while ago. He looks exactly like him. He has the mannerisms. He holds the paddle the same way when he's like in between points. Yeah, you would think he was just son or, you know. Definitely picked up the mannerisms. More importantly, the backhand loop, which Many consider during Chen Yinhua's career one of the strongest in the world coming out of China as a shake hands player. When he was asked to be a practice partner and sparring partner while he had great results over the top Chinese on the team. So Han is able to take the fifth game to bring it back to three to two. And for the first time we haven't had a two point difference. Yep. That was kind of a blowout there. And, and it might have actually been Billy with a different strategy of not making a mistake. And you it, see what their yeah, result it, it, was. It almost looked like Billy lost a little bit of tension mm -hmm. in what he had been trying to do since we saw the first four games all get decided by two-point margins. Didn't stay close when Han, Han made that surge toward the midpoint of the game. But Billy's going to have to be a little more offensive. He's not, if he thinks he can just win one when Han plays poorly, it's not going to happen. He's going to have to force the issue. Absolutely. And that's where the kind of the youthful inexperience at this level of play could hurt Billy. He shouldn't be thinking about the round or the event, but just what he needs to do to play Billy Ding table tennis. Each point is just as important. Play each point to win it. And with these 11 point games just come out of the block strong and you're halfway done. Han realizes the importance of the first two to three points to set the momentum in this match of each game. See a lot more vocalization going on when he wins a point. And right now Han has some breathing room, even though he's trailing in games to be up by one or two points, being able to play his Mm. Trademark backhand loop. There's no pressure on him right now. He can enjoy it, take his time, move the ball around, make I, Billy start to second guess himself. Well, I think the pressure is now on Billy because the momentum is certainly against him. Now he's got to force the issue and make the points. Make a good counterattack off of Han's opening. Not an easy ball to reloop. Nice block out of the mid <laughs> middle of the table with his backhand. And that's Han's backhand loop off the bounce. Slow and spinny, if it's not deep, it's gonna come over just as fast as Billy spun it up over the net. a nice combination there. And both players primarily using a lot of side spin on their serve, not so much underspin or necessarily heavy top spin, but just enough to make it difficult for the opponent to keep the serve return short and then jumping with the first heavy top spin. And generally the person who opens up first is winning the point. Generally. Both these players have excellent technique on their forehand and they can 
loop it to multiple locations. Very tough to block that ball strongly. You see, it's almost like a mirror image of each point. And Han needs to open up a lead because if it gets down to eight all, nine all, Billy will have the slight advantage with the game lead. Excellent mm. blocking ability by Billy Ding. Reminiscent of uh, Diane earlier today. Exactly. Diana Chen playing a very exciting match with Erica Wu. The wall. <laughs> Han getting the backhand loop he wanted but unable to convert with the forehand. Now Billy's taking the lead, 7-6. And a very strong opening, mm -hmm. beginning to get a little bit of separation here. Han must get this next point. Now the pressure's on Han for sure. Absolutely. You could see Han went for a placement drop shot. Billy had the forehand, but he didn't have the angle going into the table to make an angle. On to Han. But he got the looping off the serve. Han served just going a tad too long. It's 9 7. He's two, way, two points away from three upsets in this tournament. And now he has three match points. Wow. Be interesting to see if Han goes even safer or if he goes for a winner. Wouldn't be surprised if Billy goes with a deep serve right now. And Billy oh. Ding does it. He is <laughs> the newest semi finalist here in Las Vegas in the men's singles, taking out a very strong Han Shao. Four games to two, super comeback. After failing to get onto the junior team, now he is in the final four.